there. Well, thank you. Thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here, although I have to say after these impressive talks, I'm beginning to think our work is even more daunting than, <laughs> than I originally realized. So the, the World Science Festival um, launched in 2008 as a five-day annual celebration of science that presents programs, 50 or 60 programs around New York City um, for a general public audience of all ages and, and all levels of scientific background. We're now in our 12th year. Um, the festival's grown from a one-day, a one-week event to a year-round organization producing live events and a wide range of digital content um, that reaches audiences around the world. Uh, cumulatively, our audience has attracted about 3 million visitors since we launched in 2008 um, in New York and, and Brisbane and in cities where we partner with other organizations to present World Science Festival programming. And we've reached over, I think, now 65 million online views for our video content. Um, so to explain how we grapple with these issues of misinformation, I thought that we would start with a short video that really introduces how, illustrates how the festival um, communicates with our audience and how we create programming. It's a lot of uh, hard work behind that. The team in New York and, uh, and in Brisbane are working 365 days a year to put these programs together and to draw on so many different kinds of resources to reach audiences, whether it's connecting science to the arts, um, going into the communities, finding ways to connect with to, or, and to, to engage teachers and students to be part of the programs, um, to reach other students, and particularly going um, building an online archive that provides video content that is both from the festival, where we film everything and make it available online, as well as original digi digital content that we create. Um, just to move quickly, how about, there we go. Um, the primary platforms, as you can see, that we use are the festival, our digital archives, our education programs that um, happen year round and a move toward making partnerships with entities both in the United States and abroad where we can send our programs, either live programs or digital streaming um, with local audiences participating. And in 2016, we launched um, the World Science Festival in Brisbane, Australia, which is very much like the festival in New York. It's a five or six day program um, with science for all ages and audiences. Um, you met Brian and Tracy in the video, but I think that who we are is very much this blend of science and journalism. The um, core programming philosophy of the science really derives from a journalistic approach. Um, we have an editorial team of experienced producers who search for great science stories, and then they identify the science who can speak with clarity and authenticity about those stories, and we help them build their communication or their, their media and um, help them connect directly with the audience. The um, programs rely a lot on media, um, typically opening with, um, with some sort of um, presentation or media content that establishes a base level of understanding for the audience so that everyone comes as a general public audience without particular scientific backgrounds so that when the program starts, they already have a base understanding that they can be part of the conversation from the beginning. Um, they're designed to be engaging and accessible while always maintaining the integrity of the science and the accuracy of how these scientific ideas are communicated. I think the most important thing, of course, is who's on the stage. Um, finding finding um, participants who, who are the experts in the field and can truly speak with authenticity and authority about the subject. And we have, over the years, been privileged to have some of the world's leading scientists in our stage, as well as art artists and authors and renowned thinkers from all fields. Um, and we bring them together on the stage, hopefully creating um, a diverse panel of 
of sometimes even divergent views that expand the discussion. Um, not creating, we hope, controversy for controversy's sake, sake, not trying to create you know, the balanced perspective where you have always one person on one side and one on the other, but, um, but looking for scientists whose research and discoveries are central the, to the topic and who can bring different perspectives that illuminate the state of the science that's being discussed. Um, key to that is our moderators. We rely very heavily on um, skilled uh, moderators from, from broadcast television and, and other um, and journalists, as well as media personalities like Alec Baldwin, who helped us with a program on science and film. Um, and they keep the story on track. It's really important to have those moderators there moving the discussion along and keeping things moving and keeping it at a level so that the audience is understanding what's being said on the stage. Um, typically, our, our programs focus just on the science. We, unless there's a, a topic or a program such as climate change or GMOs or vaccines where misinformation rises to the, you know, is a critical part, has significant consequences and is a critical part of the discussion, we try to focus on the science and leave the political implications aside. Uh, mainstream television media often takes the opposite approach and they sort of focus laser-like on, on the um, implications for society and politics, partly because science is hard, um, hard to communicate briefly in a two-minute news segment and very difficult to, to um, make interesting and compelling for an audience in that format. But that's exactly where our programs begin, which is to work with the scientists to build media content and a strong narrative that explains the science with clarity and using the right voices. Um, and in some programs, like the one you see here, we actually address misinformation as the central topic of the program. Um, this was something we did in 2017, Science in a Polarized World. I have to thank Dieter, who actually participated in helping us develop the, the media for this, uh, although I don't see him. Um, and this tackled the topic of how do you communicate science? How do you con convince people that even scientifically literary mem literate members of the public will sometimes resist and reject information. And it's, um, you have Franz Cordoba, Paul Nurse, Brian Green, and Don Kahan from Yale. And I think it's something everyone here, I actually recommend you take a look at it online. It's, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. It's pretty fascinating. Um, beyond this, one thing the festival does is try to multiply the audience beyond those people who are in the stage. And we do that through various means. Of course, we film the program and make it available online in those YouTube videos on our uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, through partnerships with other organizations. They're just growing and growing, and they're there for anyone to use. Um, but sometimes we also will take a topic, in this case, gravitational waves, uh, following the discovery in 2016, and we will, oh, I'm running out of time. Um, and we will multiply it by doing multiple programs on it, in, either in New York or in um, Brisbane, our companion festival, and then make that um, the little flashing light. <laughs> um, and, and then also do educational programs. Uh, we have something called World Science U, which, which um, takes the scientists and deals directly with students, does lectures directly to the students. Uh, we have science youth and family programming that happens all around New York. Um, and and uh, one other example, I can't tell, am I beyond time or do I still have, oh, okay. <laughs> one other example that I'd love to tell you about later is uh, Science in the Square, where we did an entire program on climate change in, New in the, um, Times Square in New York City, and it launched on the very day that Donald Trump withdrew from the Paris Accords. So it had uh, timeliness and was an interesting phenomenon to, to watch. So sorry for going over time. Let's close this down.